Hey, welcome to Kelly's Bar in Youngstown, Ohio. This is Yards After Contact. And as you can see, I'm here by myself this week. Ryan Kelly, the co-host of the show, had a previous commitment. Uh, we tried to get somebody in here to replace him, and he sort of wasn't able to at the last minute. So we're going to start off with uh, our initial segment here. And then uh, we have some uh, the Salem Quakers are here tonight. One of the teams uh, we've been trying to get here on the show, Coach Ron Johnson has a couple of his uh, star players here, Mitch Davidson and Chase Ackerman. Salem's off to a 4-1 start. Tough loss to Canton South this past week. Their only road, road block of the season so far. They're, they feel pretty confident talking to these guys before the show that they're going to have a, a, a nice solid run to end their season. They're going to have a hard time getting a home playoff game, though, because those four or five teams ahead of them now. Salem's nine. I'm sure they'll move up a little bit uh, by playoff time. Uh, those four teams up at the top probably are going to get all the home games. So um, Salem probably will have a road game. They'd probably be 9-1 if they beat their rivals at the end of the year. West Branch, uh, we'll hear what Chase and Mitch Davidson have to say about that, and Coach Ron Johnson as well. So good start for the Salem Quakers. Uh, this past weekend, I had a dilemma of going to the Boardman-Struthers game to see what Struthers was all about. I mean, Can Canfield-Struthers game to see if the Wildcats were for real. And I also... Borman and Mooney's, that's a regular game I usually attend almost every year. And of course, my daughter goes to Borman, I have to go with the Spartans, but of course, they had a disappointing loss to their season as well. As far as Struthers goes, didn't quite, they, they had a couple really brutal turnovers to start the game off. First two possessions, 14 nothing. Canfield were, on, were on, their, on their way to victory right there. At halftime, I, I decided 27-12, I'm gonna go to Borman game. Canfield started seven, Borman started 7.30. It's their 100th season anniversary uh, game celebration. I arrived there, it was like a circus atmosphere at halftime. Borden was down, uh, had some disappointing turnovers in the first half that led to some Mooney scores. And um, I got there, it's like a carnival. It was packed, great, great situation for Boardman. Unfortunately, they weren't able to, the football team wasn't able to hold up their end of the bargain. Falling to Cardinal Mooney, uh, congratulations to Cardinal Mooney. This could be the win they needed to propel them in the second half of the season and maybe make that playoff run that I thought they were going to make at the beginning of the season. They're 2-3 and three right now, and they have a chance with a couple nice victories coming up to end the season strong and make the playoffs and then be a whole lot of trouble in that Division uh, 4, Region 13, that's, which is loaded. Salem, of course, is a member of that. They're ninth. Mooney's like 13th, 14th, 17th, something like that. And Urson is back down there, too. Urson recovered with a win over Harding this past week, which I sort of thought they might do that. Congratulations to Coach Larry Kemp. Unfortunately, Coach Arnold's still looking for that first victory of the season. Uh, Harding's going to have a, a tough road to hoe here ahead of time. Uh, they just got to play tough the rest of the season and, and hope they got some luck on their side. Urson, on the other hand, again, this could be a game that catapults them maybe, maybe not into, into something special. If they do make the playoffs, Boy, they're going to be tough to deal with. So good for them. The Catholic parochial schools in there, Youngstown Urson, both doing what they needed to do this past weekend. Uh, you know, there's some big victories, uh, surprising victories. South Range just barely beaten Brookfield. Don't really know the reasons for that. Uh, but maybe an injury or two, I'm, I'm told. But uh, quite surprised they didn't handle Brookfield a little better than that. Uh, McDonald beat Springfield. I guess that was – Springfield kind of really needed that game. We're going to have to get Coach Greer on, on the show and talk to him about – this season, uh, uh, there's been some some decent games this past week. Uh, Fitch powered over East, uh, really shut them down. Um, Liberty, Chet Allen's doing a nice job, it looks like. Don't know if they're going to be a threat or not yet. I think we need to see a little bit more of, of Liberty to, to know if they're going to be okay this year. So uh, Lakeview's on a roll. Uh, some good teams. Western Reserve proved that uh, Middle Ridge wasn't quite ready for prime time either. So, uh, you know, it's, it's been a, it was a good week last week, and this week ought to be a, a pretty special one, too. Uh, you know, right now, the Boardman-Canfield game is probably on my agenda as far as one I want to get out and see this week. So we'll see. we got a YSU playing South Dakota State. My Buckeyes are on the road at Rutgers. I will not be going to that. Uh, but uh, it should be an interesting week for, for, uh, for all sports fans in this area. Again, we're here from Kelly's Bar. In Youngstown, Ohio, Ryan Kelly is the co-owner and uh, also operates a few of the Bellaria pizzas in the area. He wasn't able to make tonight, folks. So that's one thing we kind of struggle with, just to be honest here as we close out this first segment. 
you know, we have teams lined up and players lined up and other celebrities, voice, if you will, uh, radio personalities, TV personalities in this area. We try to get them on here, give you some good entertainment, uh, let you see the guys and the coaches without their helmets on and have a nice conversation with them. So we're trying our best to get the teams here. Sometimes they commit and then they say they can't come. So we're doing our best, folks. We're trying to offer a good program here for you for the high school football junkies in the area. And things are going pretty well otherwise. But uh, we'll keep trying to provide you with, with good coaches, good players, and good entertainment. Ron Patesta always does that in itself, and he'll be with us today as well, as usual. And uh, you know, we're looking on having guys like Bob Hannon and, and some other guys join us on the show that are in the other sports, other section of the sports media in this area. So uh, with that said, uh, we're going to be back with our show. So uh, Ron Patesta is waiting on deck here, and we'll talk more sports with him, all kind of sports from the Cavaliers to high school football, to YSU, to Ohio State, uh, and more. What Ron Patesta, you never know what you're going to get from him. So we'll be back with Ro Poe from 1390, the sports animal, with more yards after contact from Kelly's Bar in Mahoney Avenue in Youngstown, Ohio. And welcome back to Kelly's Bar in Youngstown, Ohio, on Mahoney Avenue. With Yards After Contact, with me now, our guest, our regular guest of the season is Ron Patesta, 1390 Sports Animal. Welcome to the show again, Ron. How you doing? Okay. Yeah. You're loaded for bear. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, well, we've got a couple areas to start with. Let's start off with the Cavs. I mean, yeah. If, if today is Tuesday and we're taping, Dwayne Wade is a Cavalier. Dwayne Wade is a Cavalier as of an media, hour ago. You went to the media day on Monday? Yes. And it was it. it was speculated that Dwayne Wade would be a Cavalier speculated. Uh, because his contract LeBron was said bought it's out. It's not up to him, though. And it wasn't up to him. Yeah, and his nose was literally growing as he was saying that too. Kind of strange. Uh, I like it though. Yeah. No, yeah, I like it. I, I like the move. Now the only thing is when Isaiah Thomas comes back and word came down that morning, Monday morning, that they believed that Thomas would be ready to go by New Year's or maybe a little after New Year's. When he gets ready to go, okay, D. Rose is your starter. Dwayne Wade comes off the bench before Isaiah Thomas. Thomas gets going. Okay, Thomas will be our starter. You got two backup point guards. Uh, how many minutes are you going to give to these guys? Uh, can you move D. Wade to a two? Can you move, can you move Derek Rose uh, to a two? It's... It's a good problem to have. Uh, it's it's a very good problem. Derek to Rose have. is healthy. You can get 16, 18 out of him. You can get 16 out of 18 out of out of D Wade. Yeah, I, I like I like the acquisitions that they've made in this offseason. I love the defense. The, the secondary players are really yeah. strong. I, I love the defense that uh, that they're putting How's together. How's the big tall kid you've been? Zizic. Yeah, he's a big big boy. Yeah, he's are they expecting much? Le just LeBron sees the horn. Put ornament no, Le LeBron seems to think that he's got some abilities. NBA abilities. Yeah, NBA abilities. So I don't know if he makes the team out of the get-go. Uh, if he doesn't, he'll probably be in Canton for a, a few weeks and go from there. But it's going to be a <coughs> – I mean, you get 15 guys on a roster. No, oh, they've got 20 guys now in camp. Five of them are going to go. I can tell you one person who's not going to make this team. And it's a shame because Kay Felder's a good player. Well, who got – but who got – cut from Wade. Nobody. Was it Richard Jefferson? There's not a spot on the there, roster. Well, it's, you, you've got 20 guys in camp. All you need to do now is cut five guys, and then... And Who then do you think will end up? Felder will probably get... Or could be Jefferson, you're saying. No, Jefferson will make this team. I, I think he will. Uh, I think the 7-3 uh, the, the, the kid, the, big, the really big kid, I think he'll wind up going to uh, Canton. Yeah, I think he'll go to the charge. I think there's two or three of the young kids that... The kid from Turkey... Um, will probably start in camp. A couple of other of the young kids. Uh, but I, I fully anticipate this team to be a, a very tough team. I, I really like, oh, God, I really like the shape that everyone was in. I like rest weight four out of five games. Sure. Well, I, yeah, here's the thing. I mean, D. Wade doesn't have to play that much. I mean, rest his knees. You know, it's, again, you got Derrick Rose. Now, if Rose stays healthy, if He's a quality 
plays. Number one point guard. Yeah, he's a quality player. But if he stays healthy, that's a that's a fun that's a fun point guard. And it's that was the one other thing that it's going to be different about this team. When Kyrie was here, it was isolation. It was he's hanging on to the ball. It's isolation, and you're when gonna, LeBron lets him. Yeah. Well, sort of. Now you got Rose, who runs up and down the floor. Thomas runs up and down the floor. I mean, these guys are going to be a, a fast, fast break type of, uh, of a team. It's going to be a lot different to watch. So in, er, in uh, early October, you're a, you're a Cavs. Up, I think this. I think this team, if they're healthy, they have a very legitimate chance to win the NBA title. Let's shift gears. Uh, YSU. What do you have to say about the Penguins? I hope the fans show up. I really hope the fans show up. Big game. It's, uh, it's a big game. It's a very big game. South Dakota State. South Dakota State in uh, in Stan about them. South Dakota State is arguably the best team in the Missouri Valley Football Conference. Arguably. I mean, they in North Dakota State and Youngstown State. And I guess we'll find out really early on who the best team is because YSU gets to play in their first three games. They got those two teams. It's a very top-heavy schedule for Youngstown State. So. We'll see. We'll and see just, how good they are. Just the fact alone, they're in the champi- national championship game. Yeah, makes them back to where they absolutely prestige wise. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's just to me. Look, I know there are things, other things going on. I know your your um, um, boxing um, uh, Saturday night, the Saturday night amateur boxing uh, for your benefit yeah. is coming up on Saturday night that's as well. That certainly won't affect the crowd. Well, it's you know what? There's going to be people who are going to show up. Yeah. You know, and, and that's good because that raises money for you, and that's a, that's a beautiful thing. Um, I'm hoping that we can get fifteen thousand at YSU. And, and the Buckeyes play at night too. Well, tonight. they get Rutgers. I, I mean, yeah, but still, Ohio State I mean, fans are going to diehard fans are going to watch your Buckeyes. If, if there was any time to use the invention called DVR, yeah, this true. would be the time. It's true. I mean, if you I'm lose, you, but I don't think it happens. If you lose I to Rutgers, aren't good. they're watching the game. And if, you, be, if you lose to Rutgers, you got a lot more problems than y'all think. Yeah. So well, that's not going to happen. No, of course not. We're in our, I think we found our groove. At Ohio. Oh, yeah, I, you guys are going to be all right until Penn State comes to town. Well, that's getting that's good you know, here before you know it. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah that's Maryland, you got a bye, Nebraska bye week, and there yeah. comes Penn State. Ooh, Ooh, man, Penn State's a tough, sure, tough wow. team. But they should have lost, Ronnie. No, they should have. They should have lost. They, they should have, but you know what? At the end of the day, they have championship they dips, teams. They should have lost. Yeah. Championship teams be a find a way to win. A different, I agree. And they would be a different outlook right now. Of course. If they had, uh, absolutely. I guess they weren't all uh, And they pounded Iowa, except they turned them all over and let them back into the game, and they almost got it. Quan Barkley's them. just scary good. Oh, we hope, man. He's got to deal with them. That's, that's, that's a frightening, a frightening team. He's leading the receivers. He's a receiver, so he needs a running yeah, back. Yeah, that's a frightening team. Yeah, well, we'll see what happens. Uh, how about high school, Ron? Where are you at this week? What's going on? And we'll talk about maybe last I got week. The, uh, I got we the got Hubbard Niles game. here tonight. Yeah, I got the Hubbard Niles game. I got the Hubbard Niles game on Friday. And, uh, what excites you about that? Uh... Robbie Savin, now it's running back. The bands. The bands. Yeah. I know you're searching yeah. for something the bands. to yeah. say. I tried to yeah, look, look, I mean. I tried to give you an assist. Look, at the, end of the, at, at the end of the day, it's a struggle. This year it's been a struggle at Niles. We get it. It's stuff, and Hubbard. Stuff happens. Hubbard doesn't have a lot of offense. Now, <laughs> how long has it been since we've said that? I mean, Coach, you know, Coach sure. Brian Allen down there in, uh, in Hubbard, I mean, you look at this team, you know, wasn't that long ago L.J. Well, Scott was playing. Out, but, I mean, yeah. sure, but, uh, it's, it's back-to-back weeks. You know, their defense carried them in those two games against Lakeview and, and last week against Allen. I mean, they scored six points in both of those games. Well, hell, they only gave up seven points against uh, Allen and 14 points against Lakeview. I mean, a normal Hubbard offense, you won those two games. It's a much different season for the Eagles. You talk about Lakeview and Howland. Howland. If they didn't lose to Howland in the opening week, what a great season. Oh, God, unbelievable. And, and look at what Howland did with Parma Padua. Parma Padua is now ranked in the top ten according to the eight people. And Howland goes into their joint and loses by six and should have beaten them by a couple of touchdowns had it not been for some crazy mistakes. So, you know, Dom and team, they're not as bad as, as – as their record would, would indicate. How good is Lakeview? Lakeview's a good team. That's 
That's that's a uh, that's that's an under the radar Division Four team. You know, we, we've been talking an awful lot, and, and justifiably so. We're talking about a very good Salem team. We're talking about a very good Poland team, a very good Struthers team. Uh, we, I, I think Struthers. We've we've been talking about the parochial schools, and oh, by the way, for you people, all you people out there that put dirt on the graves of Mooney and Ursuline, get them shovels out because it ain't time to put the dirt on the boys I'll tell you yet. What, look at Mooney's schedule; they could run the table possibly. Not and they if, will. if they get into the playoffs, Steubenville's dead man walking between they and that's, Poland. That's why they got to play the game. Right? Well, exactly. And I saw Ursuline play Friday night. First exciting game we've had all year. Yes. But that's another story for another about time. Ursuline Harding game. Ursuline Harding was a good game. Unfortunately, both teams' special teams were horrible, and it cost Harding in the end. Um, second half, first possession, they uh, went.